Today on Pots on Trials I'm talking a load of rhubarb and that's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden, Darlac and Mr Fothergills. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. Well, it's now officially spring here. We are early March, sunshine, nice and bright, and the soil's starting to warm up and dry up. So we can very soon start to do some work in the garden. And we're here today in Dennis's veg plot. But what I'm going to be doing is lifting this rhubarb. Now you can lift rhubarb any time really from February till about this time of the year. And what we've got here is a clump of rhubarb that's getting a bit old and it's getting a bit tired. It's been in this position for a few years um, and it's done well, although last year it didn't seem to do as well and that tends to happen because rhubarb is a herbaceous perennial so it grows from these thick fleshy roots and then it dies down in the winter and we can see we've got the start of new growth coming on it but we've also got some really old woody bits here and what we tend to find with rhubarb is after five or six years in the same position it just loses its vigor gets very woody so it's a good idea to dig part of the clump up or even all of it and divide it so that we can then replant it, give it a bit of fresh soil, a bit of fertilizer, some compost, just to rejuvenate it and give it some vigor. And that way you'll get much stronger growth and, and better sticks of rhubarb. So it's something that we can do. We wouldn't want to leave it to be much taller than this, to be fair. So this is, you know, ideal stage to do it. And rhubarb has a really, really tough root. So what I'm going to do, it looks a bit drastic, but I'm just going to dig this up and I can feel that root in there now. It's a strong old root and I'm just going to work my way around to lift this clump and this is one of the things when you leave them in a few years like this they do get really tough and woody so it's just a case of going all the way around sometimes you've got to chop through it I'm going to jump on my spade to do that and chop through you'll see when I get, if I can get it out how big this room is. <laughs> gotcha. At last. Right, that took some digging out. Harder than I thought. I might revise my estimate of the age because I don't think that's three or four years old I think it's more like 10 or 15 years old you can see got this really thick fleshy root now it doesn't matter that we've cut through that because it will grow from the buds at the top you can see there's no actual fiber in there it is just this thick yellowy orange fleshy root so what I need to do is now to get some pieces off that and like when you're splitting perennials um, the best bits are always around the edge so that is a good bit there so the way to do it I find is to get your spade and just chop a lump off like that so I've got two bits there that would grow of course because look it's got the bud on it there so that would grow but this is a, a nice piece here and what I'm going to do is just pull off some of this dead growth that's been the old leaves from the years gone by and you can see it's actually started to almost make a trunk it should be growing from lower down than that uh, there's more buds there so they will also grow in fact I'm tempted to take that old piece off but let's try another piece here so I'm just going to get the spade in sometimes you've just got to give it a bit of persuasion like that and again that's a a nice piece so from a, a clump like this we could potentially get four or five or even more than that good plants the real old woody bit in the middle I would chuck away but we can see on this one it's got the main terminal bud there but well, then it's got all these little dormant buds all the way round it and they will all grow to make rhubarb shoots so what do we do to plant it that's really simple we need to make sure that the ground is forked over so I'm just going to fork it over I've already given this a forking over before you need to spend a bit of time preparing the ground because it is going to be in there for a few years and what I've got here is some compost so I'm not planting it in exactly the same spot I'm moving it down a little bit and I'm actually going to plant two or three pieces so I'm just going to show you how we do it with one so I'm putting a bit of compost on the ground 
this is our homemade compost it's really lovely and there's worms in it and so they're going to pull that down into the soil i'm just going to mix that in so that it's getting down a little bit and then i can dig my hole so i'm just going to dig a hole there so the soil's nice and loose coming about two feet away from the wall so it's got room to grow and then I've got my rhubarb hip here don't worry about this cut wound there that's not going to hurt at all so I'm going to put it in like that so that these buds can grow I'm just going to pull the soil around it we want to plant it so that they're just visible so just pull this soil around and give that a firm in so we don't want it sticking proud out of the ground and I'm just going to use my foot just to give that a firm like that and then take the footprints out I always like to leave nice and tidy like that and then finally what I'm going to do a couple of things is feed it rhubarb is greedy so it needs some fertilizer because there's obviously some goodness in the compost and in the soil but this is quite a light land and the nutrients leach out quite quickly so I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of fertilizer this is grow more which is a fairly fast acting balanced fertilizer seven percent nitrogen seven percent phosphate and seven percent potash and then I'm just going to rake that in always rake fertilizer in so that it then is in contact with moist soil and then it dissolves and goes into the soil to the roots where it's needed if you leave it on the surface it oxidizes and the last thing is a little bit more of the compost and we're just going to give that a bit of a mulch now I'm not going to cover over these big fat buds because we don't want to smother them because they're already above ground level so I'm just putting almost like a donut shape of compost around it and that will seal in the moisture and then the growth will all come from this center right so there we go all mulched and all ready to start growing and it will do very soon we'll start to see those shoots and it will make more roots there's plenty of moisture there in the ground so it will grow away and we're going to get some reasonable sized sticks of rhubarb off that but don't be tempted to pull them this year because we want this to really build up its strength if we pull them it weakens it so if we're going to be canny the best thing to do is leave a clump in the ground like I've done undisturbed and we can still pull from that and then we're going to leave this to establish in the summer if it's dry and it gets quite dry by this wall I'll give it a good soak because we want it to grow as much as possible and then in the autumn and winter it dies down we clear away all the leaves and then next spring a year after now basically it will start to grow again and next year we can start to pull the sticks off it it's established by then and then it will grow happily for another three or four years and then we'll dig it up and split it again so perfect time now if you've not already Already done it and you need to split some rhubarb get on with it straight away this weekend so that it's got time to settle in and start growing through the summer And don't forget, if you've got any bits of the rhubarb left like this, don't throw them away. You can put these into pots, grow them on, or maybe give them to a friend that hasn't got any. And of course, you can watch all our videos on Facebook and on YouTube. Next time, we'll be back doing a bit of hydrangea pruning. So we'll see you then. Bye.